blood tests for THC are very fraught with error. There were several interesting studies I found. Um, actually, if you're a chronic user, as you all know, that THC and the cannabinoids in general are fat-soluble <coughs> compounds and they go to your fat stores in the body, there's actually pretty strong evidence that when you use again, so if you smoke a joint and, and you last smoked, say, three days ago, it actually releases some of the stored THC in your fat, so you can get a falsely elevated blood test. And a lot of those things that are released from fat are breakdown products of THC and may not be chemically active, but will dirty up your tests. And there are profoundly few standards. <laughs> now, I want to jump ahead to, to uh, what happened with this fellow, John Guerin. Um, how many of you remember Walter Payton? And sweetness, right? One of the greatest football players running back for Chicago Bears. I love that guy. He was a great athlete, um, upstanding citizen. He had uh, idiopathic uh, stenosing cholangitis, which is a, a terrible liver disease. It's hereditary. It eventually destroyed his liver. Uh, he would not move himself up on the transplant list, despite being famous enough to do so. Uh, and he eventually died of liver failure. Uh, Mickey Mantle, who also was of a baseball hero when I was a kid, was a raging alcoholic, probably played the last 10 years of his career as an alcoholic, and drank his liver into oblivion. Might have even outdone David Crosby. But uh, he used every bit of his infamy to get himself a new liver, and then turned right around and kept drinking, trashed his transplanted liver, and died about five years after that of acute uh, liver failure. Uh, there is absolutely no evidence, and I want to state that, no evidence in the literature that cannabis damages the liver, that cannabis will in any way impair an organ transplant. The argument that the transplant team used at Harborview, which is an affiliate hospital at the University of Washington, and I used to have a primary point at Harborview, actually was remarkably made by one man, who was the head of the transplant team, uh, he says, Excellent surgeon. Um, he uh, actually is a foreign trained doctor, but he's been here for the past 10 years. But he was quite arrogant in his opinion that cannabis would impair this man's ability to have a successful organ transplant. Interestingly enough, uh, when we questioned him, he couldn't provide any literature. The only thing he could bring up was referring to aspergillosis. So I researched that a little bit. Well, aspergillosis, it turns out, I didn't even know this, I hated microbiology in medical school, but aspergillosis is everywhere. It's on the carpets in here, it's in the air, it's kind of like valley fever down here, coccidia mycosis is in the dirt. If you were immunocompromised, it's true that if you had aspergillosis exposure, you could get a fungal infection in your lung and possibly in your liver and, and die or destroy the transplanted organ. But the argument that it comes from contaminated cannabis is simply not substantiated in the literature. There was one or two case reports, um, and one of them you know, was uh, two or three patients, and the other one was, was, I think, a single case report. On that basis, these guys gave that man a death sentence. I've made the argument, along with Mr. Hyatt, that at the University of Washington, at least, Anybody that is denied an organ transplant for whatever reason should have an automatic bioethics consult. So in other words, an independent team of physicians, nurses, clinicians, psychologists would independently review that decision and make a, 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 an opinion on that. But for one man, the head of this transplant team, and he was backed by his nurses, who I thought were equally arrogant, to basically have this man on death sentence. So it's really a, tra a tragedy and a travesty. I'll just close by this little, uh, this kind of reminds me of uh, Tommy Chong, but at any rate, you know, when you have a sick man or a woman dying of uh, some disease and they're using medical marijuana, the federal agents come in and tell the patient not to move. Thank you.